Hello. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Got my green on. I hope you have yours on or else you're going to get pinched. Um, and uh, here we go with some online learning. Um, as I mentioned in my note to you, today's lesson is going to be on African customs of marriage and sex. And the reason this comes up as a topic initially, I think, is because of how they appear in our novel, Homegoing, where you have read about a number of men who have more than one wife, and you've also read about the tradition of the family of the groom giving money or gifts to the family of the bride. Uh, it's called the bride gift in the book. Um, sometimes it's called bride price, but actually the term more and more that um, sociologists like to use is bride wealth. And then of course, you know, the practice of having multiple um, wives is called polygamy or as we'll see more precisely polygyny. I'm gonna put this over here. Um, so you're going to take notes on this. Each of you individually will have your own set of notes. And um, I want to start off with some general concepts. And that is that in Africa, marriage is conceived of as a social institution, as the joining together of two extended families rather than, as it is more often in the West, a private matter between two individuals who fall in love. And if you ask young African uh, men and women why they want to get married, uh, unlike their Western counterparts, they will tend to talk in terms of it as uh, a social engagement, um, a social institution that they want to participate in because they want to have a family and children. And um, in Africa, the context for doing that still today is through marriage. So in the West, of course, people will generally answer that question by saying, oh, I'm so in love. And well, <clears throat> Romantic love, as we saw in the most recent chapters of Homegoing that we've been reviewing, um, does come up from time to time. It is more the exception than the rule. And what happened when we saw the character flee from the arranged marriage uh, would have to be considered very unusual. And um, so I want you to keep that in mind as you continue reading Homegoing. Um, let's talk then about why it's different in Africa. It seems that it is probably due to the fact that these are agrarian economies. In other words, economies that are primarily developed through agriculture and because there is more of a collective ethic in African societies than the individualistic one that is so prominent in the West. And we'll see how that plays out in various ways through these customs of marriage and sex. So let's start first with bride wealth and then we'll go to polygamy. This, as we saw very early in the book, can take the form of outright cash payments, but more often, traditionally, it would take the form of livestock like sheep or goats, cattle, that would be given by the groom's family to the brides. And the question is, why, why does this exist? And it seems like there are four basic 
Okay, continuing where we left off there. I think I got cut off because my computer went to screensaver mode. Um, so four basic reasons for bribe wealth. Uh, the first is as an expression of gratitude for raising a wife. So typically when the marriage happens, the woman will move from her village to the groom's village. So all of a sudden, again, these are generally agricultural economies, the groom's village family has a new worker and that increases the amount of farming that you can do and the productivity that you can have. So all of a sudden, new person working in the fields alongside the husband and there's just an expression of thanks for raising that woman all these years. Second and related is to compensate the woman's family and village for the loss of her labor for the rest of her life that's gone now. And so the bride wealth serves that purpose too. Thirdly, with the expectation that children are going to come of this union, there is the sense that the bride wealth guarantees the right of the husband and his family to those children and their labor as field hands. And fourth, it is a way to cement the relationship between the two extended families. And this is uh, perhaps a bit funny to think about, but while the bride is gone, what is typically left in her place are goats, sheep, cattle that had not been there before. And these beasts uh, roam around in the grounds, the compound of the woman's family, and it's a little reminder, oh yeah, these people gave us all these wonderful animals, and um, that helps cement the relationship in case any troubles arise uh, later on in the marriage. So that takes us uh, into polygamy. So polygamy is a general term and it breaks down into two different types. There's polyandry, which is more rare, and that's when a woman has more than one husband. That doesn't happen too much in Africa. Um, and then polygyny, G-Y-N, which is a Greek root that you may remember from the classical world, meaning woman. So multiple poly right women and that's what is commonly practiced in africa um, currently depending on the country about 20 to 35 percent of marriages in africa are polygamous 20 to 35 percent so it's pretty widespread. The question is, why does it exist at all? It's not allowed here in the US. And um, we don't really understand it. We think of it as being somehow wrong or kind of unfair. So we have to suspend our judgment when we look at this and really try to understand it from an African cultural perspective. So anthropologists have identified seven different explanations, um, all I think part of the answer to the question of why does polygamy exist in Africa. And the first is that there just aren't enough men to go around for the women in Africa. And that's due to a number of different factors. One is that for some reason that scientists haven't quite figured out yet, the 
infant mortality rate for male children in Africa is higher than it is for female children. Second, there, as you know, you may have heard, are a lot of wars in Africa, and this goes back even to intertribal wars. And the war fighting in general is done by the men, and so you have these fatalities uh, at a disproportionate rate amongst men. And third, there are initiation rituals for young men as they reach the threshold of manhood, and sometimes they are dangerous. They might involve going out on a multi-day hunt for a lion. And sometimes you get the lion, sometimes it doesn't work out so well. And um, you have instances of young men not making it through their initiation ritual. So for all those reasons, not enough men to go around. Second, because again, these are agrarian economies, they depend on field hands. And if you have more field hands, more children, then you can be more productive and um, have more crops. So there's an incentive to have more children, and the easiest way to do that would be to have more than one wife so that you can have uh, more than one uh, child in rapid succession. Need some water? I'm going to take a pause here. Okay, we're back with water. It's my first time doing one of these, um, so it's fun. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, so where were we? Uh, field hands. And then um, third reason. Large families, which again are easier to create when you have more than one wife, are in some ways a hedge against the inevitable deaths of children in Africa. This is largely because of the tropical climates that a lot of African countries are in. And there are, as you may know, many tropical diseases that we in general don't experience here in the US that um, African children are subject to from malaria on up. These are diseases that, by the way, you have to get um, inoculated against uh, before you travel to Africa. And there's a whole series of shots and pills and whatnot that you have to take. So Aiden, it was a good idea to just go to Africa and have a field trip during this time when we're not able to meet in person, but there is a delay. You can't just hop on a plane and go to Africa. Um, so, uh, th yeah, that's just a sad reality is that there's a higher uh, infant mortality in Africa and um, that families just expect to lose some children to those diseases. Fourth, um, going back to high adult male mortality in warfare and other ways, um, polygamy is a solution to the problem of a widow. Um, which in our culture we solve in different ways. But in Africa, if a woman is widowed, she may marry the brother or cousin of the man who died without a problem. Even if that man is already married, he would just take her as a second or third wife. And the reason why that is um, practiced more in, in Africa is that there aren't at least until recently, government programs to help women who fall into that unfortunate state of affairs, and also until recently, not a lot of economic opportunities for women to just be independent without a husband and make a living uh, on their own. So that's the fourth reason. Fifth, there is in Africa just a, a very great pressure for a man to produce an heir and specifically a male heir in order to carry on the family name. So if a man gets married and they try to have children and they can't, of 
course, it could be because the man is impotent. You don't really know. There's not a lot of like fertility clinics in Africa at this time. Um, and so he is able, though, to try with another wife for an heir. Um, so second or third wife. Um, and it's okay if the woman, the first wife, um, is, does not produce a child. She can still be part of the man's family, but she would um, also have other women who would be living in the compound with her. Okay, uh, sixth. Because this is a sort of psychological explanation, because these large families tended to be wealthy because they produced a lot of crops compared to families where there was just a single wife. There came to be a psychological association between polygamy and prosperity. So again, this was something that might not have been acknowledged as a reason, but because as Africans looked around and saw that the families that were the wealthiest were the ones that had multiple wives, that it came to be something that was associated with great, great wealth. So there was another sort of psychological incentive to um, have more than one wife. Then lastly, in many African cultures, it is a custom for the couple not to have sex after a child has been born up until the point that the child has been weaned. In other words, when it's no longer breastfeeding. So this is just a custom, it's just a tradition. There are things like this in various cultures. And what that would mean for a man is potentially two to three years of forced abstinence, which from a male perspective can be hard. Uh, from a female perspective, can be hard too. But um, for this reason, the psychologist uh, and sociologist speculate there is the option of having a second wife that you can have sex with or a third wife. She gets pregnant and has a child and have sex with. Um, so you don't have to endure you know, years basically of abstinence while the child is still being breastfed. So that's it. Um, hope you're able to follow that. The nice thing about this video format is that you can of course pause and go back and um, enhance your notes. The last thing that I'll say about uh, polygamy is that um, sociologists do expect that it is going to decline from the current rates that it's at over time due to uh, urbanization and modernization and Christianization. So there is in almost all Christian churches um, a prohibition against polygamy. So as Christianity continues to spread in Africa, um, it's going to decline for that reason. Um, urbanization, so uh, families uh, are no longer dependent on the agrarian economy as they move into cities. And so the incentive to have lots of children so that you can have many field hands goes away. And then finally with modernization, um, two factors. One, better health care so that um, some of these diseases that are killing um, African children at high numbers are starting to be put under control. Um, so there's less this incentive to have many children in case some of them die. And then also with modernization, there are more economic opportunities for women, women on their own. So they're not necessarily um, going to need to uh, marry uh, in order to have a happy and prosperous life as a woman. So, 
Um, one of the things that I like about this topic is that it gives us uh, one example of how when we travel or just explore through literature or film and encounter phenomena that are different from our own culture, we should, from this lesson, um, start to develop the habit of suspending judgment and, and just instead asking, huh, why? I wonder why that's the case. And as you have seen, I hope, it, the reason for it uh, can be complex, uh, deep, and not necessarily apparent to the Western eye. Um, so I hope, to, hope that you will take it as a lesson in that way as well. And we'll see more of these as we move throughout the course. Okay. I look forward to connecting with you online when we have our um, first online class. Be well. Bye-bye.